Hey guys and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. Today I have two projects for you. One is an antique restoration and the other one is going to be half of another project that I'm trying to finish where I'm redoing my dining set. The first project that I'm working on in today's video is this antique little desk. My grandmother bought it at a yard sale that we went to together. She got it for $15 and the person that owned it had not kept it in a weather controlled area so it had a big old crack in it from drying out in the desert and the finish on it as well was dried out but not completely ruined. Most of the piece just needed to be rehydrated and the hardware was in really good condition still so there wasn't a whole lot of work that I had to do and it was really Really simple to make it look brand new again or as I like to say as good as old I also picked up a few things from the yard sale which is everything you see in this picture and everything was priced between five to ten dollars the bottom of the legs here are just dried out like I was saying and I'm going to show you how easily you can fix an issue like this on a piece of your own the first thing I'm going to do is sand the top. The top I can't be fixed with something simple and easy. It definitely needed to be refinished. One, because it had that big crack in it, and two, because the finish that was on it originally was peeling off due to it having been dried out. That is something that happens here in the desert very often with antiques. It's one of the biggest issues that you find when you're buying secondhand wood furniture here is that the finish is like peeling off, super dry, or the wood has actually cracked. Since I am restoring this to its original wood stain color, I don't need to worry about getting every single bit of this original stain off before I stain it again. So right now I'm just going to leave it how it is and test out some stains to see what's going to match. My Restora finish in Walnut did not match. It was too light, but the actual dark walnut stain was a perfect match to match the original on here. And I was just double checking, comparing it to the stain against that back piece there. After I figured out that that's the right one, I'm going to go ahead and fill in that crack that we had there. I just picked up this random brand of wood filler and it is in the color Walnut. We almost didn't realize that this wood filler comes in different colors before leaving the store. And so my husband had to run back and get the right color of Walnut in order to do this piece right and make sure that the wood filler was not going to stand out really bad against the other wood stain. I just used a random um, chisel knife here because <laughs> that's what I had on hand. Any kind of flat surface tool will work. Even a popsicle stick could work for a small crack like this. And I'm just going to make sure that it goes really deep down into the crack and then take off any of the excess wood filler. It only took about 15 minutes to dry before I was able to sand it nice and smooth. Since I'm doing the finishing sanding on here, I'm going to use 220 grit to sand down that extra wood filler on the top as well as smooth the top out as much as I possibly can. So that way when you run your hand along it when it's finished, it's going to feel extremely soft and kind of worn in and keeping its age. The stain I'm using is a dark walnut and it's exactly the same, like I said, as the original stain finish. I apologize for the weird elbow angle here in the video. I didn't realize that it was recording at that kind of angle as I was going. So I'll try and cut out my elbow as much as possible. A lot of the products that I'm using today in this video are products that are like my tried and true favorite products to use. Dark Walnut has been one of my favorite stain colors hands down since I've started refinishing furniture. Everybody has their own kind of stain color that they love, but for me, I really love the stain color and I've used it a ton in my house. But I am interested to know what your guys' favorite stain colors are, so drop a comment down below and let me know what is your favorite stain to use or your favorite stain in general for wood finishes. After I finished restaining the top, I handed the baton to my husband to finish the rest of it. My belly has grown big enough now to where I don't really enjoy bending over. <laughs> it makes it kind of hard to breathe, in fact. So he's doing all the parts that I would have had to bend and squeeze and move all around doing by restaining all the legs and the bottom part of this desk. Earlier in the video, I showed you how when your legs are dried out or when the wood is dried out, sometimes you can just do a really easy fix. This is that really easy fix. So you're just going to go over that piece again with the same color stain that it was originally. You don't need to sand or prep in any way other than cleaning. 
you run that stain over everything with a rag or a paper towel of some kind and that's all you need to do to rehydrate that stain. Then you're going to let it dry and wipe off any excess, but what I'm going to do, it, since I already refinished the top of this, is go over the whole entire piece with spray shellac. Spray shellac is one of my most used products, I would have to say, out of everything that I use to refinish furniture. It's really versatile in all the things that it can do, like blocking stains and stuff, but what I'm using it for today is simply as a sealer. It's a really good sealer for darker color wood tones. It does yellow over time, so you don't want to use it over white, but it does really good creating a deep, shiny finish on these dark wood tones like this. And I knew that my grandmother's dining room where this was going had a set in there that was a dark wood with a glossy finish, so I wanted to make sure that it matched for her. Before I forget to mention, yes, I was wearing my proper PPE while doing this as a pregnant woman. I had a respirator mask on to make sure that I didn't breathe in any of the stain fumes or spray shellac, you know, any kind of spraying product that you're using. You should really use a respirator mask instead of any of those little particle masks because the spray particles become extremely tiny and those other throwaway masks are not going to really block any of those tiny particles from getting into your lungs. Even though shellac is non-toxic, you don't want to breathe in particles that are not meant to be in your lungs. While that's drying, I'm going to talk about my next project. I bought seven chairs off of Facebook Marketplace for $50 total and it was one of the best finds I've ever had actually. I had no idea that these chairs sold for four to six hundred dollars and once I learned that I just couldn't paint them. So instead of painting the chairs I'm going to paint my dining room table. This table is nothing fancy. It's not real wood. It's a fake wood finish meant to look like wood and I felt a lot better about painting this than I did about painting those chairs. I do need to still refinish those chairs, so that'll be in a video coming up in the future, but my husband stepped up and helped me out with this one, and we used Rust-Oleum's enamel spray paint in a gloss finish. I highly, highly, highly recommend that when you are painting dining tables or dining chairs that you use this product. The enamel paint is extremely durable and it takes a little while to cure so it may take, depending on your climate, like three days or three weeks. It really depends on the amount of humidity uh, where you live. But once it cures, it is like hard as rock and doesn't scratch and will really stand the test of time. It's, it's like a factory finish that you would get from an actual furniture store where they can do like powder coating. <laughs> it's really, really strong. And since it comes in a spray can, it's really easy for anybody to go pick this up at a hardware store and do this on your furniture at home. Just make sure that you clean your piece of furniture really well before you paint it because you don't want your paint finish to get messed up by any kind of grease that was underneath the paint before you put it on there. Stay tuned to the end to see the reveal of both these projects. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, and if you guys have been watching my channel for a while now, you know that I enjoy Skillshare and taking their classes. And one of the awesome things about them sponsoring this video is that they are going to give the first thousand people to click my link below a free one month membership to try out Skillshare and see how you like it. The classes that I take most often are about productivity, and the one that I did recently was called Real Productivity, Create Your Ideal Week, and that was taught by Michael Karnjanapricorn. And it really helped me plan out my calendar. But if you are already a super productive person and don't need help in this area, they have other subjects for their classes. And I think some of the other subjects you guys would like a lot are the fine arts and the crafts subjects, which have several teachers and many different classes that you can explore. Skillshare is like an online learning community where you can really explore the things that you don't know or expand on things you already do know. Since it is made for learning, there are no ads and they are constantly putting out new classes. I hope you really enjoyed these projects today and that you feel a little more confident in your ability to make over pieces that you have at home that may have similar issues or just that you wanted to update or to renovate in the way that you think is best for your piece. It doesn't always have to be complicated. Sometimes it just takes simple products that work really well and are easy to use.
The dining table, I am extremely impressed with the finish that I got out of it. When I bought this table, it came with this glass top, so I just put that back on and that will obviously make it more durable and much easier to clean with all of my children. I still need to refinish these chairs, although I do love that worn look that they have. And I'm so glad that I decided to look up the maker and not paint them and leave them in their original finish. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe right here. And if you want to see more of my DIY projects, hit this link in the video right here.